Hey guys, welcome back to the Vintage Speed Garage channel. Today we're dealing with a very serious topic, and that is what to do when your shaft's just too long. I've been dealing with this my whole life, and sometimes you just need a shaft that's a little bit shorter, right? The shaft I'm talking about, of course, is a drive shaft, right? This is the drive shaft that came off of our 70 bump side here, and what I'm going to show you guys today is how to shorten the tubing and take a few inches out of your, out of your drive shaft or how to retrofit a shaft into your project um, that may be out of a different vehicle. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take the end yoke here, we're going to grind the welds out of the end yoke, separate the end yoke from the tubing, shorten the tubing. In my case, we're going to take 13 inches out of the tube and then knock the end yoke back on and weld it. You need to make sure that your end yokes or your ears on your end yokes are lined up and in line. So I'm going to make some reference marks along the tubing. Uh, so that I can get those realigned uh, before I fully weld it. You do need to be a pretty competent welder for this. Uh, I have seen driveline failures from poor welds. Uh, sometimes factory and aftermarket shafts will break right along the weld bead. So, you, you know, even, even an automated weld sometimes will fail if you put it under enough stress. Typically what we see in driveline failures uh, is the shaft will twist. Um, Normally that's because you get a you get a rock dent in it or uh, you bend the shaft and then at high RPMs the shaft will twist uh, and under under a lot of torque the shaft will twist and fail at that weak point in the tubing. Drive shafts just like your wheels and tires on your vehicle are balanced uh, and that's to cancel out harmonic noise that may be coming from the rear axle um, and this particular shaft has two different balance weights welded, one at the top and one at the rear of the drive shaft. I'm not going to be balancing this shaft, uh, at least not right away. Uh, my main priority right now is to cut it down. If I pick up a little extra road vibration, that's not a big deal to me right now at this point in the project. And at some point down the road, either I'm going to switch out to a one piece aluminum drive shaft or I'll just get the shafts balanced at the driveline shop. Shortening a drive shaft at a driveline shop is probably about a hundred dollar deal. If you need to lengthen your drive shaft and they have to replace the tube and, and add length to the drive shaft, you're probably looking closer to three hundred dollars on that deal. Don't quote me on those prices, but those are ballparks from what I've had to deal with in the past. And so by shortening the shaft yourself, you can save yourself a couple of bucks and, uh, and get your project up and rolling without having to go to a driveline shop. This is a few hour few hours of fab work it's not not a big deal to do yourself uh, but you do need to do need to lay some proper beads on there don't be boogering this thing up and having the yoke snap off and saying vintage speed told you to do that so I'm gonna get my fancy fab table set up here I've got the danger cam ready to get some sparks thrown in his face and uh, let's get to work okay guys so we've got the drive shaft here I've marked the center line down between the ears on the uh, drive shaft so when I take my 13 inches out as long as I line that line back up we should be pretty close uh, in in the balance of the drive shaft so what I'm going to focus on here is using uh, initially a flap disc uh, to take down the peak on this weld it's it's pretty pointed and peaky so I'm going to knock that down try and get a flat spot all the way around the uh, the weld bead and then I'm going to switch to a cutoff wheel and score it. Now we're not going to use the cutoff wheel to cut all the way through there. Uh, the, the tubing is probably around 120 wall, eighth inch, so it's pretty it's pretty thin tubing. Don't go at it with the cutoff wheel and cut all the way through that uh, because we want to save the flange that's inside of the end of our drive shaft tubing. So I'm going to use the cutoff wheel just to score it and get a line going all the way around there and then I'm going to switch to a wide grinding wheel and grind out the weld bead. That's our objective here is to grind the weld bead out, knock the end yoke off of the, the drive shaft tubing itself. So that's what we're going to start with. Flap disc, flatten this out, score it with the cutoff wheel, and then grind out the weld bead with the grinding wheel. Once that's, uh, once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and take my 13 inches out of the drive shaft and take the piece that's cut off to the vise and pinch off the end yoke. I'm going to show you how to do that here on the vise. So first step is we're going to flap disc this a little bit.
And that should be good enough to get us where we want to be here. Um, now I'm not going hog wild with the grinder and trying to flatten this out and make it look pretty at the end because I don't want to lose sight of the weld bead. The weld bead is our objective here. We're going to grind out just the weld bead and uh, if I was to go at it with the flap disc and flatten this all out then I wouldn't be able to see where the weld bead ends and the tubing begins. So just uh, I just flattened it out to get me a good surface here for the cutoff wheel. Okay, so with the, uh, the bulk of the weld ground out here on the drive shaft, what we're looking for is down on the bottom you'll see some discoloration. When you get close to separating the two pieces, you'll see that the, uh, the metal at the bottom of the groove will turn blue because it's so thin that the heat from the grinder uh, is actually changing the color of the metal. So I'm not quite there yet. I'm starting to see some little pinholes here where the uh, bottom of the, of the weld wasn't fully penetrated into both uh, pieces of the base metal. So we're, I know I'm getting close. Once I see the, uh, the bottom of our groove here change colors all the way around, then I'm going to put it in the vise and, uh, and pinch it and snap the, uh, snap the remaining bit of weld that's left uh, and knock the yoke off of it. All right, so with our groove cut, uh, well deep enough to separate uh, the end yoke, the cast yoke from the tube. I'm going to go ahead and pinch the tube here and separate it. it should make it a little bit easier. I'll be honest with you guys, I obviously ground this way too deep. Um, I was looking for a color change. I expected a 120 wall drive shaft. Uh, I haven't ever had one of these Ford Explorer drive shafts apart before. Apparently this is a 095 wall thickness. Uh, it's much thinner than a 120 wall drive shaft. And I never saw the color change. So I went ahead and ground it way too deep. So when I put it back together again, I'm going to have to make sure I get that welded correctly and get that filled all the way around um, when I weld the two pieces back together. But I think we'll be alright. Okay guys, so the last step uh, to do here before you burn this in is to make sure that your ears are in line. Best way to do or easiest way to do that, <laughs> best way to do it probably on a lathe with some kind of laser and some kind of digital machine, but easiest way for us home guys to do it is to set your drive shaft down on a flat surface. In this case I'm just using the floor of the garage here, it's pretty flat, and put it down on two, the two opposing ears and check it for rock. I've had to do a little persuading here to get it uh, to get it lined up, but I don't have any rock in it, so that means that these two ear surfaces are flush. Once you got all the rock out of it, everything's in line. Make sure it's fully seated. The end yoke is fully seated in the shaft, and burn it in. That's the last thing we've got to do here. Burn it in. Throw a little paint on there, and we should be good to go. Alright guys, so I do have a TIG welder and I could TIG this together, but one of the things that some of you guys have mentioned on my channel that you like 
is that I don't use all the fancy tools. So we're just going to burn it in with the MIG. I really don't have time to sit, set up the welder and sit down here and make sure everything's cleaned anyway. So I've turned up, uh, turned up the steel mix a little bit on the MIG just to make sure I have good coverage. And I'm just going to burn it in with the mix. So first thing I'm going to do is my three tacks around the perimeter. Uh, try and offset them about every 60 degrees, right? So that you have a have your your tacks in three different even places all the way around. And then I'm just going to weld. Uh, I'm just going to stitch it in between my tacks, and uh, we should be all right. So there you go guys, there's how you can shorten your drive shaft at home without having to take it into a driveline shop or on your farm or your ranch or wherever uh, without having to take it into a driveline shop and without using any fancy tools. All you need is an angle grinder, a couple wheels and a welder and you can shorten up your drive shaft, get your project rolling and if you do have driveline vibes down the road you can always take it in and have it balanced. My drive shaft here for the 70 bump side uh, fits a little bit better, I took an extra half inch or left an extra half inch on the length of the drive shaft so I get a little bit more spline engagement. I've still got an inch and three quarter uh, before the, the yoke bottoms out in the slip so that's good. That means uh, as the rear axle articulates and moves up and down over dips and whatnot I shouldn't have any bottoming out issues. Um, truth be told I probably would have liked to leave an extra extra half inch on there uh, but uh, I took 13 and a half out of the frame, 13 out of the drive shaft, and I figured that extra half inch of engagement would do me good. And uh, I think I think we'll be all right. Uh, the welds came out okay. Um, I think I could have done a little bit better on keeping on keeping uh, the bead up against the shoulder. Uh, there was a couple spots that I had to touch up where I didn't quite get all the way up the shoulder to the top, so I've I've cleaned all of that up. Uh, knocked all the BBs off and uh, gave it a little coat of black. So when you see my truck at a car show, if you happen to see it, anything that's black is something I recently did. And if I had more time, I'd prep out and paint the whole drive shaft, but I don't have time for that right now. I've got to try to make this show this weekend, and nor the only way that's going to happen is if I keep hammering away here at the, at the minor details. The next video is going to be, uh, I may not shoot video of it, I've got to shorten up the mufflers and I'm going to offset the flow masters so that they're not droning against each other. Uh, apparently if you if you change the links of the tube going in and the tailpipe coming out of the muffler uh, you can cancel out the drone. So I'm going to go ahead and try that and stagger the mufflers um, on the on the 70 bump side here and hopefully not get any drone on the highway. We'll, we'll see how that goes. I'll report back if it did any good or not. So now I've got to slam this baby back in there, lube everything up, lock tight my hardware that attaches to the rear axle flange, and we can check off the uh, drive shaft shortening on the 70 bump side. If you guys have any comments or suggestions, leave them down below. I love getting feedback from you guys on, on how I do things, and if you feel I could have done this better or have, have a better way or easier way for the next guy, please leave it in the comments below so that you know we can share that knowledge. Uh, if you're new, please click the subscribe button over here somewhere. Uh, I'd appreciate it. I could use all the subscribers I can get. Oh yeah, and I almost forgot. This is one of the three-part video set on the shortening of the V10 powered 70 bump side project here. Uh, this video is just the shortening of the drive shaft, how you guys can do that at home. The other two videos on the bed shortening and the frame shortening uh, are going to be up here soon. I've got a ton of video. I've got over 64 gigs of video that I shot on uh, shortening between the bed and the frame. I'm going to compile that and put that stuff all together, but it's probably going to be after the weekend here after I get this truck to this car show because I just don't have time to edit that much video right now. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and throw up the drive shaft video uh, right now so that you guys have something to watch here in the meantime. So keep checking back. You'll get those two videos here uh, in the next week or so. Thanks again. But for today's video, guys, that's going to wrap it up. That's it from Vintage Speed Garage Channel. Uh, I'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.